big news. We have a new 2015 Ford F-150 and we tell you all about it. Also, reader questions on upscale sedans next on Talking Cars. Hi, and welcome to Talking Cars with Consumer Reports. I'm Tom Mutchler. And I'm Gabe Shenhar. And I'm John Linkove. Cojones, hutzpah, you might even say balls. I just did. That is what it took for Ford to radically change that F-150 redesign. Yeah. Parked behind us is a new 2015 Ford F-150. By far the biggest step in pickup trucks technology in a long time. Gabe, what are the big changes here? Well, all aluminum, first of all. The whole truck is aluminum. The body. Uh, the body, yes. This, this isn't an Audi A8. Right. It's no, not no. a Jaguar XJ unibody. Right. It's, it's a body on frame, so the frame is steel. And also the front, the, the bumpers are steel as well. We yeah, you took that. a magnet to it, didn't exactly. you? Exactly. And the right. only place it sticks is on the bumpers. Right. What and, does that get them? Um, dramatically reduced weight, which allows them to use smaller engines that have better fuel efficiency. Yeah, John, about how much weight did they lose? It's about 700 pounds uh, over the last F-150 Super Cab that we tested. It's a hell of a diet. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a little bit will be from the engine, but it's all going to be from the body. You know, the majority of it's in the body. And it's uh, about 5,060 pounds on our scales filled with fuel, which is the way we t um, weigh vehicles. And, you know, the last one's over 5,700 pounds, so. Yeah, and you and can that's, uh, that's 400 pounds less than the, uh, the competition, the Ram and the Silverado. Yeah, the Silverado is about 5,400, the Ram's about 5,500. No one ever mentions that the Titan's 5,200, mm -hmm. but it feels all the world like 5,200. It feels, it's, it's a fairly light feeling truck. Right. But like you said, you reduce the weight, that lets you put smaller engines in it. This truck has a 2.7 a liter V6. Yeah, that's a pretty tiny V6. Yeah, you consider a Dodge Dart can barely get itself around with a 2.4 liter. Yeah, so turbocharged engine, you know, you, you open the hood up and you see this big space, you know, where they could fit a V8, you know, and then there's this little six place back there. But I was surprised driving it at first, you know, mm -hmm. wasn't 100% sure what they had dropped off because there was no paperwork. I was like, well, you know, if it's a 3.5, it doesn't feel great. No, it felt really good, really pulled on the highway, uh, very tractable, you know, good response. And yeah, I mean, if, if it's pulling away around so much less weight, what is it going to do to the, I think, 15 miles per gallon or so we got in the last one? You know, it'll be very interesting to see when we, we rig one that we buy. Yeah. What did you think of driving it around uh, performance -wise? I actually looked under the hood and I thought it was a V4. There was so much, so much <laughs> space in there. <laughs> it is. It's a big, giant space. Yeah. Uh, no, the, the engine feels great. I mean, the truck does everything it needs to do. I mean, it'll lay rubber all right. Uh, well, even. that's important. So, uh, yeah, um, I, I, I was pretty impressed with the response of the engine and the transmission, how it's matched to it. And, uh, and the truck is really quiet. Yeah, I mean, you know, the truck never wants for power. You compare it to mm -hmm. the Silverado, which um, has, has a bit more horsepower and a little tiny bit more torque with the 5.3 liter. The Silverado feels like a dog compared to this. It feels underpowered. Yeah, you really have to yeah, dig into that. It's throttle. lethargic throttle response, yeah. and, uh, you know, which is with all those trucks. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, numbers-wise, it'll be interesting to see how it matches up, but see the pants feel, yeah, this feels like a rocket ship, and that feels like it's got an anchor. Yeah, no, exactly. And, and it's something you would never expect from this. this yeah. You know, how lively the, the powertrain feels. And you're right, it is quiet. You know, the, don't think that because this is some small turbocharged engine, you're revving the pee out of it all the time. You're not. Not at all. I mean, you have so much readily available torque here. Mm -hmm. It yeah. feels very effortless. Yeah, I mean, I, was, I spent time in it and then spent time in uh, our Suburban, you know, which is a very quiet vehicle overall, you know, for a big truck. This felt even quieter. Mm -hmm. um, just, it, it feels almost luxurious inside, you know, you just have, you know, little, little wind noise off the mirrors and such, but aside from that, yeah, really silent, really nice place to be. Yeah, wind noise is my only noise complaint, but again, you know, it's a very quiet truck. Uh, you mentioned six-speed automatic. Um, a little surprised, you know, it's not an eight-speed automatic, you know, like, like Ram has. No, Ford doesn't have that yet. No. no. I expect, though, that they're going to play this game of leapfrog where they'll come out with this truck, it will, I bet it's gonna have best in class fuel economy. Uh, yeah, well, for, for one, one word of caution in general, uh, Ford EcoBoost engines uh, haven't turned out in our tests uh, to be all, uh, all that they cracked up to be in terms of fuel economy. So uh, we'll wait and see on that. 
Well, but I mean, you're right. When we tested the 2011 F-150, we, we bought both a 3.5 liter mm -hmm. EcoBoost, which turned out to be a volume selling engine, a very popular yeah. up engine upgrade, and the 5 liter, and they got mm -hmm. the same 15 miles per gallon. Right. I think though both of them are going to move forward because you're losing that 700 pounds. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I mm -hmm. think the Silverado 16 miles per gallon overall, I think there's a good chance of them beating that. I don't think they're gonna get the Rams 20 out of the diesel Rams. The Ram. diesel, yeah. yeah. Right. Um, you know, I, I couldn't resist. Aluminum truck, my aluminum Airstream trailer. No. Match made in Of course. It is, it is. I had <laughs> to hitch them up uh, together. I was amazed. You know, just, it just pulls so easily up hills. My trailer weighs about 52, 5,300 pounds. It pulled it with no problem at all. You know, it, it never dipped below fourth gear. You know, even on hills, on highway grades, I mean, I, I didn't, I'm not towing mountain passes out west, but it's just, it's amazing. I don't think people are going to expect what this truck can do. And you can tell what gear you're in because you have that nice display in there. Huh? Yeah, I do, yeah. Like, I do like that display. <laughs> yeah. I'm wondering though, if a lot of people are gonna go in and they're still gonna get a 3.5 or a 5 liter because they think they need it. I don't know, it would be interesting to see. I mean, I think most people, I don't even know if they realize the displacement that uh, is in the engine. Mm. You know, look, you said the volume leader last time was the 3.5, yeah. you know, so obviously people are open to buying a turbocharged engine in the truck, mm -hmm. you know, and a smaller engine mm. that's not just V8, V8. So, sure. you know, I think that there is a window, you know, and, and again, if Ford's delivering on numbers, that's the big thing. <laughs> you know, it's one yeah. thing to say EcoBoost, EcoBoost, like you talked about, and then make, well, it's not getting any better mileage than the V8, you know, it, that's going to sway someone to go pick up a V8, you know, just for a macho-ness. Well, the if V8's it's, going to sound better, too. It, well, exactly. I mean, that's, this is quiet, yeah. but the, yeah, V8's, right. the V8 is going to sound better. But, you know, if they, well, if they yeah, throw I mean, up it, a 16 or a 17 miles per gallon overall, you know, that, that should shake some people. I think you're right, though. If you didn't know what engine's under the hood, you wouldn't know by driving it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you'd, you'd some no people idea. or dealers may not even put a whole lot of emphasis on, on the displacement here. Yeah, maybe not. Although that said, I think the 3.5 and the V8 are going to be rockets. I think, I think they're going to be, be a whole lot of fun. It should be. <laughs> um, going beyond the engine, uh, driving the truck, how is it to drive? I wasn't enamored with the steering. I know you guys both like it much better. I felt a little weird on some turns where I felt like I really had to turn in more than I, than I anticipated. Um, besides that, driving, it's fine. You know, I didn't have a lot of lane wander. I didn't feel uh, as a lot of overcorrecting. Um, again, quiet, not as compliant as the Ram with its independent rear suspension. Well, the coil spring. Yeah, the coil spring, excuse me, yeah. No, not independent rear, my error. Yeah, no, no, no. The coil spring, um, but still. It was a nice truck. Your thoughts? Yeah, I, I think it's uh, quite uh, pleasant to drive. It feels uh, relatively agile for a oh, truck. Oh, especially compared to the previous F-150. Oh, that was always the right. truckiest, no. well, actually, along with the Tundra. It was one of the truckiest trucks you could buy. Right. So I think there is a nice uh, turn in the response with the truck, and it feels kind of light on its feet, uh, certainly uh, better than, than competition here. And um, and the ride's not, not bad. You know, no, it's, no, it's, no. it's totally competitive. It's, Better than Silverado may not be as, as good as uh, the Ram, I agree. Yeah, I think that's fair. I don't think it revolutionizes how pickup trucks drive, but then again, right. it, it probably didn't have to. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, and again, it, it's a very familiar concept. You know, it, this truck has like the same wheelbase as the last truck, despite being a clean sheet redesign. You know, it's the same 145 inches. You know, it's. Yeah, I was driving it on the road. I thought I'd get all kinds of looks and uh, people thought it was just a Ford pickup truck, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it is. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, they, they sell a ton of them, you know, hundreds of thousands each year, you know, volume uh, vehicle, you know, it, it's not, it's evolutionary, it's not revolutionary, they, you know, it's not from, you, you know, you see some of those old ones in the 90s and they're so tiny with the little nose and then you see this and I'm like, oh my God, that's obviously a new truck in, in comparison. Mm. But yeah, you know, it, I mean, maybe it's a little Tundra-esque grill on the front, but aside from that, it's an F-150. It, it just has that Ford DNA and next to each other, you'll pick it out, but going past, yeah, it's, it's a Ford truck, there you go. Yeah, you know, despite the opening, you know, about how risky this is, what's risky is the building it. What's risky are the financials, you know, getting this much aluminum, you know, to build three, 400,000 F-150s, uh, figuring out how to form that, uh, figuring out how to have repair shops mm -hmm. fix it. Mm -hmm. That's the risky stuff. Yeah. And the fact, of course, aluminum costs more than steel yeah. to build. That's the risky stuff. I think, though, they were smart in playing it safe with the styling, playing it safe with the general concept. If it ain't broke, 
Right. And I'll fix mm -hmm. it. Yeah. yeah. Like top the interior's selling. very familiar. Oh yeah. You know, roomy, comfortable. Um, I like the four. Uh, you know, plugs for charging, uh, pro, you know, stuff, through, you know, you can use plugs, could, lots of plugs, you know, lots of power outlets, um, knobs still, you know, yeah. on, on controls. Yeah. Yeah. The controls are a lot more modern. Uh, I mean, the, the windows, mirror controls are, are nice and, and so, uh, so much more contemporary feeling now. I like the, um, the door release. That's just kind of cool. The it's, door it's a, release is nicely done. It's, it's a yeah. nice integration so you don't have separates with a grab handle and then the door release somewhere else. It's just yeah, right it's there. Yeah, it's like a flap. You reach down into a flap. And yep. It's hard to think of a different, it's hard to think of them reinventing an interior door latch. They reinvented yeah. an interior yeah. door latch. Uh, there may be people not, not finding it very quickly though. Uh, hmm. Maybe. Yeah. And one thing that it doesn't have that the Silverado has is uh, auto four wheel drive. So <clears throat> that's I think I think that's a real advantage in uh, to especially set it, to in, set it and forget it. To set it and forget it, leave it in auto for the rest of your life. That's I think the best. So you don't have to think about and make a judgment when to um, <clears throat> be in four wheel drive and when to get out of four wheel drive. Like maybe pulling out from a chip sealed road like around our test center mm. onto uh, a paved road where I was like, oh, I, let me just make sure I don't spit gravel back at somebody yeah, no, and I, I put it gosh. in four wheel drive. I, I take the truck home and like. I think the last thing Dave, the care told me is don't get it dirty. Don't get it dirty because you're going to bring it in and put it right on the set. I turn the corner and there's this chip sealed room. I'm like, ah, oh, uh, that's just not going to, that's just not going to be good. Yeah. But it, it worked out okay. Uh, yeah, you know, interior is very comfortable, huge rear seat, lots of nice features here. You know, they, they kept the ladder in the back, the optional ladder in the back, the steps on the side. There's spotlights on the mirrors, which will be great yeah. when you're backing up. There's a lot of neat little touches here. Yeah, that's that's particularly neat. The step on the, the side step, mm -hmm. that's uh, that's really handy. And the better integrated ladder mm -hmm. in the back, you know, it's smoother. It doesn't oh, look yeah. like it's tacked on. It's actually integrated. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it looks like it's going to be a very well done truck. Mm -hmm. uh, very impressive truck. Uh, I think it's going to do pretty well in our ratings. Is, it's is, is highly likely. Guess. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll buy a couple of them when they come out and sure. see, see how they do. Yeah. Well, this week I forgot the iPad, so I'm reduced to reading reader questions on my phone. But uh, slumming Apple, it. Apple. Yeah, I am slumming it. I need a. I need a new iPhone six. Anyway, he, here's what we got. You know, there's a common theme. You see questions over and over again. You see people mention cars over and over again. Uh, for some reason, the Volvo S60 keeps coming up. Really? Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. from Justin Clark. Uh, this is from the show about buying cars for your teen driver. I actually think that a late model Volvo S60 would be appropriate. Yes, they can be expensive repair if they break, but I, they fail less frequently than German cars. My parents bought my sister 2001 S60 when she turned 16, and we never really had any serious problems with it. And it had traction and stability control, as well as a wet weather mode. Now there's a trap there, isn't there? Thinking that what car is has stability control. Well, some years, uh, yes, they, the Volvo called it DS something, stability, acronym, confusing as hell, and it had only traction control, no stability control. Yeah, and you way expect to, that a car company like Volvo will give you stability control. That would be nice. Yeah. I mean, and, and the trick is, you look, there's a button on the console above the shifter. If it says STC, that's stability, traction control. The stability is a misnomer. The real stability control is dynamic stability control, which is DST. Yes, yeah. ESTC, one of those two. Which yeah. I think became standard in 08, 09. I mean, it was a lot later mm -hmm. than you'd expect from Volvo. The S60 OK car, not. I mean, it'd be interesting to know, OK, in 01, did they buy it new for her? Did they buy it No, used? I think they bought it I mean, You know, how old? So you know, let's what, just say, spend? make sure you buy one uh, with the D whatever. Yeah, yeah, D yeah, but I mean that's going to be rare. It's yeah. going to you're going to probably need a T5 or a, or a new one. Yeah. I know a bunch well, of people who bought these cars. I mean 08, 09 is is going. Well, they built I, I don't think they you want to go older in 08, 09 no, anyway. No, that's true. They built the same damn car forever. Right. It was the same from right. 01 yeah. to. To but 10, I think, yeah. 10 or 11. I think it's a very, uh, very nice car for a teenage. And, uh, and probably, I think you're getting some discounts uh, with insurance with, with a car like that. You might, it will crash well. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just hope it doesn't. <laughs> the teen driver. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's true. Let's hope it doesn't crash. 
uh, fumbling, around with, fumbling around with my iPhone. Uh, another question about upscale cars from Andy Davis. I'm saving up money to buy a new sedan in four or five years. I often wonder if $32,000 cars like the Buick Regal are really better than well-equipped family sedans. Are they? Should I be saving extra money now? Is well, uh, let, let's separate the two. I mean, the saving money is one thing, and we're not financial advisors here. We can't help him there. But I, do I play think, one on uh, TV. <laughs> I think on the on the car question, uh, yeah. I mean, it depends what you appreciate. I mean, if you want, uh, dr if you want to drive something more interesting, more sporty, uh, that uh, is a little fun, then yes, uh, you're getting something more there. But if you value room, rear seat room, then uh, you're not getting anything more there. Your thoughts? Pretty much the same thing. I mean, you know, 32,000, do you buy a, a Malibu or an Impala versus a Regal? You know, I mean, what, what do you want? Do you want a family sedan that has mileage geared and room? Do you want something that's sporty? It, it depends on what's the flavor of your ice cream, you know, because there's, you know, a ton of flavors out there at the same price. It all costs the same for the scoop. You just have to decide what you want on top of that cone. And that's, the, that's the thing. Do you know I went to a place in Portland, Oregon that had bone marrow flavored ice cream? I'm sick now. Oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, yeah, getting back to the topic. Well, he uh, I mean, mentions the Buick Regal, and uh, we like the Buick Regal quite a lot. That is a nice car. Right. Mm -hmm. you can lease but we like the Impala, too, you know, and but, it's just a whole different segment, and it's what you want for your that's cash. That's a valid point. The thing is, um, we also like the Malibu LTZ with the mm -hmm. same two-liter turbo that's in the Regal. I like that car a lot. That's a really nice yeah. car, and it has, I mean, it still doesn't have a great backseat, but it's got more room than a Regal. It's probably going to cost a little less. Uh, yeah, it's going to depend what you want. Do you want the sporty handling? Do you want an upscale badge? I guess you can argue with Buicks. They're, do, you they're want, do you want an Audi upscale. competitor or a BMW 3 Series competitor at a lower price? Okay, Regal's there. But, but I mean, if you don't care about that care stuff, about that. a loaded Accord, a loaded Camry, a loaded Malibu, a loaded Sonata, pick, yeah. pick yeah. any one of them. It's a lot of car for the money, and it's a very nice car. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And... There's more, you know, if you're buying cars by the pound, it's just plain more. Right. So yeah. save up. <laughs> or don't. The decision. <laughs> save up. The prices aren't getting any better. They're always yeah. going up. Yeah, so save right. up. There you go. That's going to finish it up for this episode. As always, thank you for listening. We'll see you next time.